Greetings, everyone. Well, it's closer look time again. Yeah. So, as you know, I recently picked up the Batman animated series Blu-ray set, so I thought we'd take a look at that. And I thought, you know, while we're taking a look at that, why don't we take a look at all the Batman animated series DVDs I have as well. Just kind of compare the packaging and the contents and all that good stuff. Um, yeah, so we got quite a lot to go through, so let's get to it. A closer look. Batman the Animated Series, today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. So, Batman the Animated Series debuted in 1992, around the same time that the second movie came out. And uh, I remember reading about it in some of the comic book magazines that I was reading at the time. And uh, I thought it just sounded amazing from what I was seeing. And then when it finally premiered and I watched it, I was just like, wow, this is incredible. I mean, the art design, the music, the, the writing... Uh, the characterization, just everything. It was easily bang on the best non-comic version of Batman I'd ever seen. And uh, it was just this amazing distillation of all these great aspects of Batman lore with, you know, a lot of the aesthetic sensibility of the Tim Burton movies, but also very reminiscent of the old Max and Dave Fleischer Superman cartoons, had kind of that Art Deco style. In fact, the, the style that they developed for it, they called Dark Deco. <laughs> um, and it was quite notable in terms of how they would put it together. They really wanted this dark look to it. So rather than painting the backgrounds, for example, on white paper like they normally would, they actually painted them on black paper. so that they Because otherwise they would have been using so much black paint, it just would have been ridiculous. So they actually saved money doing it that way. And uh, the whole thing was shot on film, so perfect candidate for blu-ray and yeah just an amazing amazing series which holds up phenomenally well today as easily one of if not the greatest screen adaptations of batman ever done um it's absolutely fantastic if you're a batman fan you absolutely owe it to yourself to see this series and just sit and watch and enjoy um and it was hugely influential just on the batman mythos in general as well this was the series that gave us Harley Quinn, for example. Yeah, some of you may not know that, but Harley Quinn actually started as a character created solely for the animated series as kind of a you know, companion to the Joker. And she was so popular and so well-received that DC later incorporated her into the comics. And now she's you know, a pretty popular character in the Suicide Squad movie and... Uh, uh, she's had her own comics. She's got a. There's a Harley Quinn animated series coming out that's aimed more towards adults, and uh, yeah, just uh, amazing stuff. They also took a lot of the uh, classic villains and retooled their origins to make them far more interesting, honestly, than some of them were. Uh, big example being Mister Freeze. Um, like Mister Freeze was just kind of a cheesy villain that came out of the '50s originally. This guy who was all about cold and cold rays and stuff like that and could freeze things um but in this they they gave him an origin story that is just so fraught with tragedy and pathos and everything that um it actually won an emmy it won an emmy for best writing in an anim animated series and there's no wonder why i mean you watch that episode it's called heart of ice by the way if you want to check it out um it's just phenomenal how deep the story goes into the the despair of this character. I mean, uh, and it wasn't just with Mr. Freeze. It was with a lot of the villains. A lot of the villains have very tragic origin stories where it's no wonder they went bad. Like, you you can't help but feel bad for them. And it's, uh, it's a real testament to the quality of the writing in this show. Just that um, they were able to give the villains who, you know, in the past were seen as somewhat two-dimensional, but they gave the villains these these amazing backstories that just, you know, sometimes just tear your heart out as you see what happened to them. It's like, yeah, I'd probably go bad and want to destroy the whole freaking city too. So, yeah. Anyway, great show. Cannot possibly recommend it highly enough. When I got this Blu-ray set, I just started powering through it. It's a 10-disc set. Uh, I've watched up to disc six <laughs> so far. 
uh, which is a real treat for me, actually, because I haven't even seen a lot of the later episodes. Even though I've had the DVDs for quite some time, I never got around to rewatching the series uh, in full. I just kind of watched the first couple of volumes and um, and didn't go much farther. But uh, so a lot of the later episodes are entirely new to me. So pretty cool stuff to see them for the first time and in high definition, no less. So let's head on down to the black box and we will take a closer look at the Blu-ray set and all the various DVD sets and some of the single Blu-rays I've got as well and uh, check them out. So there's been a lot of different releases of Batman the Animated Series on home video over the years. Initially what we got was volumes like this where it would just be a single disc release with maybe four episodes on it. Not really much to speak of, but that was it. We we were happy to have them <laughs> because it's all we had at the time. And then, of course, we also got releases like this of the movies. So here we have Batman, Mask of the Phantasm. Very nice. Quite a nice release, actually. It's got a little bit of extras on there. And in everybody's favorite, Snapper Case. Yeah, there we go. Oh, and look, double-sided disc, too. Everybody loves those. Yeah, no. Anyway, it's all we had for a long time, and we were happy to have it. And just while we're on the subject of Snapper Cases, let's take a look at the other movies I've got here. So here's, of course, the second movie. I actually did have uh, both of those movies, uh, Mask of the Phantasm and Sub-Zero, on Laserdisc uh, a while ago. So it's quite nice to get them on DVD as well. These were uh, fairly early DVD editions. I remember uh, in the early days of DVD, Warner released everything in these snapper cases. It was kind of their trademark. And, uh, I don't know, fans were kind of mixed on them. They were kind of cool. A bit of a pain in the ass to put on the shelf, though, because you always had the edges of the one beside it getting caught on the one behind it. And, yeah, it was just... Annoying. It's pretty nice artwork on these, though. Like, look at that. That's beautiful. Big Mr. Freeze artwork there. And then, uh, then of course, we had the Superman animated series, and then they had the Batman Superman movie. There you go, which I think was just a straight-to-video release. This could actually be the first sort of, you know, dedicated DC superheroes straight-to-home video movie. Of course, now they do it all the time, but, uh, but yeah, pretty cool. So, got a whole bunch of special features there as well. I'm not going to bother reading all the special features of all the releases we're going to be looking at here because there's a lot of them. You can just pause and read them for yourself. I'll try to keep them all in focus for you. So, there you go. So, pretty cool stuff. This was, uh, yeah, this was like barely a movie. It's 61 minutes long. So, And then the last Batman animated movie we got, or Batman animated series related movie we got we have mystery of the bat woman there you go this one was actually proper movie length it was uh well kind of 75 minutes sorry i thought it was longer than that apparently it was not but uh, yeah 75 minutes there you go and it includes a short as well and some other goodies on there and there we go i think this is the last of the snapper cases oh look at that that's actually kind of cool the uh, the chapter index done like the lighting on the building. That's pretty neat. Yeah, I still haven't watched this one, actually. I haven't seen it. And I guess, actually, technically speaking, there has been one more movie that kind of ties into Batman the Animated Series. And that would be... This one. Batman and Harley Quinn. So in this case, I actually got the, uh, the Steelbook Blu-ray of it here. Quite nice artwork on there. We got Poison Ivy as well. As you know, Harley and Ivy like to team up from time to time. And there we go. And then we have the uh, the Blu-ray and the DVD. Same artwork on both. Just the uh, different coloring there. And uh, yeah, pretty nice. Do we have some artwork underneath as well? Yes, we do. Let's uh, take a quick peek at that here. Normally with these DC animated movies, I tend to get the uh, the regular Blu-ray editions because they have really nice slip covers with them. But um, in this case, I went with the Steel Book just because I don't know why not. Why not? Sometimes 
I just like to get the steel books. So I guess all the single disc and movie releases sold really well because at long last, a few years after them, we started getting these full volumes of episodes of Batman the Animated Series. So the entire series was released over the course of four volumes, and each one contained about 28 or so episodes on it. So a really good uh, thorough collection and also included lots of additional uh, extras that we had never seen before. Sorry, I'll just show you the back there. So if you want to take a look at the special features there, you can. So this, I think, has the first 28 episodes. Yeah, so four discs, seven episodes per disc. Just, uh, you know, slides out. Just kind of a, you know, slide. I see some people store them like this. And that drives me crazy. No, you don't store them like that. You store them like this. That That's how you do it. And it's not like there's any advantage to doing it one way or the other. It just looks nicer. Anyway, my opinion. <laughs> so here we have lots of artwork on here. Honestly, I was never particularly keen on the color scheme of this. All the yellow and red and stuff. You just seem... I mean, I get what they're doing, doing, like trying to make it look kind of comic booky and stuff, but I don't know. I just didn't really care for the visual style of it. I would have preferred something darker to kind of match the tone of the series. So we open this up, and it gives you disc-by-disc -disc breakdowns right there, which is really handy. So you can see what's on each disc. Clear as a bell. And there's extras on pretty much every disc. And there's also commentaries, which is pretty cool, which is really nice. And this un unfolds here, so it's just a gatefold kind of thing. And we just take a look. There's artwork underneath each disc. This is very, very nice. Very nice set. Disc 3 contents there. And then disc 4 contents there. And if we take a look underneath, got more artwork there. So yeah, I really like how they have so much artwork and uh, and pictures from the show there. It's uh, it's wonderful. So then we hold on a second. Where are we going? Go like that. There we go. And we go over here. Then this one just flips out, and we have the last two discs. Just give you a look at the artwork underneath. And there we go. Very nice, very nice indeed. And uh, kind of a strange expression on the Joker's face there, but whatever, that's okay. So this is great. Uh, love these sets. They were a little pricey when they first came out. They were they were actually about sixty bucks a set, I think, when they originally came out. Now you can find them pretty cheap. They've actually all been re-released in keep cases, so you don't get the fancy gatefold packaging anymore. You just kind of get all four discs on trays in a uh, keep case. But uh, so this was volume two, which I believe was another 28 episodes. And once again, storing it in the case that way. So slide them out. And see, now this color scheme I thought was a little better. I mean, we had the dark blue, but still all this yellow. Like, I just, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of yellow as a color, you know. In certain respects, yes. Like, if it's an old Quinn Martin production cop show, then yes. Use yellow for the text, because that's how it should be. If it's something like the old 60s Batman, then fine. As long as yellow is one of the many, many primary colors you're using in the color scheme, fine. But for this series, I don't know. It just doesn't work for me, you know, the yellow. All this yellow. So here we have disc two. There we go. It's a little crunched. Oh, well. Take a look at all the artwork there. That is not doing too well. Okay. And then here, just hold that down for you so you can read it. Look at all the artwork there. Very nice, very nice. Now, I have to say, I was completely obsessed with this show when it came out. It absolutely blew me away. Um, in retro episodes over the next uh, while, you'll occasionally hear me mention this show and just how much I'm loving it and, and just raving about it. And at the time, I was uh, attempting to record all of the episodes off TV. And I was recording them on 8mm tape as well, so I could have slightly better quality. 
Um, pretty cool stuff. And I ended up getting, uh, I think the first season they showed the first, they actually produced 85 episodes initially, but then they kind of piecemealed them out over the course of two seasons. So the first season was the first 65 episodes so they could show it daily. And, uh, and then they put out the, the remaining 20 episodes the following year. So at the time, uh, in the retro episodes, you hear me mentioning 65 episodes and how I managed to record so many over the course of time. Um, as I recall, I got darn near all of them on tape, uh, at least during the first season. So that initial batch of 65, I had the vast majority of them. And uh, it was great stuff. So just look at the side there. And then this one. Oh, look, it's Bane. Yeah. So... I gotta say, also, I like the, uh, I don't know how well you can tell, but these are actually all embossed. So you can see they're all kind of bumpy. Let's give you a quick look at the other two here. So here's volume two. Just gotta get the lighting just right so you can see the bumpiness. There we go. Just the, the figure of Batman on the front. The rest is all, all flat, as you can see. And then, uh, and then this one, too. Now that said, as much as I complain about the color scheme, I actually do like the artwork on this. Like I like the original art of Batman and such that they put on the cover. I think it's very, very nice. So, okay, so we take a look at volume three here. There we go. That's great. And I mean, I love all the character art, obviously, too. I mean, this had a very stylized look to it, a very unique look. See, now in this case, again, we've got all the yellow and then uh, it's kind of like a, a, almost a pinkish purple, but I don't know. Purple is okay. Purple and blue, that's okay for Batman. I can dig that. But again, what's with all the yellow? Like, I just don't, don't get it. So you can see there's quite a lot. There's a couple of different commentaries on here. Got some, uh, additional stuff on there. So... I want to make sure I show you all the artwork underneath. So all the underneath artwork is just stills from the show. So um, I would assume that are relevant to the episodes on that particular disc. Uh, so just be a moment here. Just pop that out. And there you go. Very nice. Oops. <laughs> Crash. That's great. And these up there we go so here we got Robin yeah I thought uh, I really liked the the takes on the characters in this too like uh, Robin was all I think for a long time seen as a bit of a you know laughable character not you know sort of the goofy sidekick annoying kid whatever but I really liked his personification in this like this was a Robin that was determined to get things done and just took no crap from anybody and like his origin story or his um not his origin story but his story the one that goes into his origin story uh robin's reckoning is quite an excellent two-parter that really shows uh his his determination and and his pain as well like with uh how how his parents were killed and stuff like that and uh, and it goes into the whole thing about is revenge really worth it and it's pretty heady stuff but, I mean, that wasn't unusual for this series. This series, and I think one of the reasons it's, it's so beloved to, to this day, was that it really did not talk down to the audience. I mean, the, the quality of the writing is so good in this show, and it really holds up phenomenally well. And um, they did a lot of uh, sort of alternative takes on the origins of a lot of the villains and whatnot. You can see the Joker got a bit of a redesign in this, uh, this season here. This was the final season. So slide that out. And I just noticed, actually, uh, Batman is embossed on the spine as well. Is that the same for all of them? Yes, it is, actually. So you can see, a little hard to see. It's very subtle, but you can see the embossing there. And, and there. Just kind of shine the light across it so you can see the the bumpiness, you know, <laughs> and yeah, and there, you can see that, yeah, so, okay, so we look at, uh, so this is the final 24 episodes, what was, uh, 
doesn't say how much the second volume or third volume was. Third volume, I think, was 27 episodes, so it, was, it wasn't quite. So it was 28, 28, 27, and then 24. So there we go. So it looks like Batgirl got a bit of a redesign in this season as well. I don't think I've actually seen this season, to be perfectly honest. I've had it on DVD for ages, but I've mostly just seen the first two seasons, sort of the original batch of 85 episodes. Uh, and I see we got Nightwing shows up in this season. Well, damn, I definitely got to... Uh, Definitely got to watch it. Looks like everybody got a redesign in this season, actually. Mr. Freeze looks different. Interesting. So, anyway. Yeah. I remember hearing about that, that they kind of retooled uh, the character designs for this season for some reason. I don't know why they did, but... Uh, but there you go. So we got... Uh, oh, my God. Come on really hate it when they're too tight on the hubs. Okay, can you come out, please? Holy shit. Wow. Try not to snap the disc in half. Anyway, you can tell I've never taken these discs out, eh? <laughs> so there's uh, all of that. Yeah, you can see everybody looks... They have, like, dark eyes. Like, I don't know, they look weird. They look different. But, uh... We head on over here. So this one is it's only three. No, it's four discs as well. Yeah, that one came out a little more easily. So let's take a look there. There we go. And last but not least, there we go. So that pretty much wraps up the DVD releases. So it was a pretty, uh, you know, it was great. Um, there was one more, though, <laughs> that sadly I did not have. And this is why I ended up going with the four individual volumes. They released this. Batman the Animated Series, The Complete Collection, which had everything from the four individual volumes, plus an art book, plus an additional disc with some new featurettes on it. This thing was so ridiculously limited edition, um, I didn't even have a chance to buy it. I never saw it in the store. Um, I only ever saw it online, and it sold out within about a month. It was a limited edition, one-time only pressing. It sold out within about a month, and it was gone. Out of print, fetching collector's prices. Beware of bootlegs, because there's a lot of them out there. So it came back briefly. I don't know if on Amazon. I remember I saw, saw it show up on Amazon randomly one day. They had a bunch of them in stock, and then it disappeared again. So I don't know if somebody was going through the warehouse and found like a box full of them or something. But it just sort of mysteriously reappeared at normal price for a very brief time. And then, boom, it was out of print and collector's prices again. So I had been kicking myself for a long time for not getting that. And um, really, really wanted it. But uh, sadly missed out on it. So diving into the world of Blu-ray. Uh, one of the earlier Blu-ray releases was this one. We actually have Mystery of the Batwoman Blu-ray edition which essentially has all the same contents as the uh, DVD, as far as I'm aware. Does it have the uh, short? Yeah, it has the Chase Me short as well. So, there you go. So, finally get some uh, Batman the Animated Series in high def. However, it's not the original. It's this sort of revival movie that they did years later. But, hey, something's better than nothing, right? You can't really see the artwork. There, there we go. That's a little better. So, so then, a couple years ago... We suddenly got this. This appeared. Batman, Mask of the Phantasm on Blu-ray. Oh, my God. So, yeah, needless to say, everybody and their dog snapped this up. And I think Warner was kind of uh, blown away by how big the response was. And what we didn't know at the time was this was something of a test. Single disc release of Mask of the Phantasm to see what kind of demand is there for Batman the Animated Series stuff on Blu-ray. Is there enough to justify, say, a little wider of a release? A little bigger of a release? 
Well, it turned out the answer was a resounding yes. This thing sold like hotcakes. I don't know anybody who didn't buy this when it came out. I think everybody I know has this. So we got word from Warner a few months later saying, wow, this really sold uh, well, so we have something to announce for you. We're going to put out the complete series of Batman the Animated Series on Blu-ray. Yes, I know. It's been a long time getting up to this, and this is one you guys really want to see, but had to give a little bit of context. So, yeah, needless to say, everybody lost their minds. They're like, oh, my God, we're actually getting Batman the Animated Series in full high def, in complete form. Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. So the first thing that came out was this limited edition, which, again, pretty much everybody I know pre-ordered. Um, and it is fantastic. We'll take it, we'll take an in-depth look in a moment here. So we got the indicia on the bottom and contents on the back. Not a flip over, you know, backing card or anything like that. It's actually a full, uh, you know, it's printed on the back here. So the interesting thing about this is it also includes Mask of the Phantasm. It also includes the Blu-ray edition of Sub-Zero, which they also released as an individual release. So that's pretty cool. But we'll talk about that in a, in a little bit just when we uh, get to it. So this is the limited edition version, which includes, I think, some additional packing goodies and, of course, these three cool Funko Pops. we got uh, Batman, the Joker, and Harley Quinn. So I didn't really care so much about the Funko Pops. I just kind of wanted the other pack-ins. But, uh, but these are cool anyway. I mean, I do like Funko Pops. I've got a, a handful of them in my collection. So let's crack this ba baby open here, and we'll take a look inside. There's quite a lot of stuff. I think we go from the bottom, actually. Yeah, we'll go from the bottom. So basically just a big, flimsy cardboard box. And um, slide this out, and we have the set proper inside. In addition to that, we also have this, which I'll show you in a little bit, which is uh, basically some uh, cool postcards so let's uh let's just zoom in a little bit here okay so what we have here is the series basically so we've got the bat logo on the back we've got uh, i mean you could just put this on your shelf and put the the flimsy box away if you wanted to you know i mean that's uh perfectly acceptable i think i think this essentially here is what you get in the regular edition here if you want a quick look at the regular edition this is what it looks like. So different cover. This one you can find everywhere. As far as I know, it's not limited. So you don't have to worry about falling into the same pit of despair that I did and missing out on it. Uh, this should be available, you know, for the foreseeable future. So very nice indeed. So, okay, let's take a, let's take a look here. I just got to remember how this opens up. Ah, right, okay. So basically, comes out the top like that. There we go. So what we have essentially, so this is a hard box, very nice. So what we have here is the entire series in this handy dandy little book. Look at that. And uh, got some artwork on the back there. It's kind of cool. You can only see it when the light hits it a certain way. But you got the, uh, so it's like the gloss forms the picture on the matte background. And then on this side, we got more, we got Batman, we got the Joker. Got, uh, looks like the penguin. Got Robin, of course. Mr. Freeze. Nothing on the spine there. Okay, so let's open this up and see what we got. Oh, uh, look at that. Personal letter from uh, Alan Burnett, one of the uh, producers and a writer of the show. Just going to pull this back a smidge. There we go. Very nice. And there you go. And once again, you have uh, disc, disc by disc breakdowns, special features. It carries over all the special features from the uh, DVDs. So you have everything that was included on the DVDs. Plus, it has additional stuff as well. So you got like special introductions by Bruce Tim and and stuff like that. You got uh, yes, you got like an introduction. And uh, so this is the commentary from the DVD set. It's funny because in the DVD set, they're talking about how dirty everything looks in terms of the prints, <laughs> yet for the Blu-ray, everything's been cleaned up. So as far as the disc, this is, I know you guys are gonna love this. We have uh, these paper sleeves and the discs are a little tricky to get. I'm not gonna take out every single one of these, 
but uh, just to give you an idea. So just fairly simple discard on them and uh, be wary of fingerprints taking them out. So we're just going to wipe that off. Thankfully, it's Blu-ray. Blu-ray is virtually impossible to scratch, so uh, no real worries about scratching the disc. It's just kind of annoying that they, they have that kind of packaging. We just can't seem to get away from those. And then we have disc two. We got a nice picture of Catwoman there and uh, special features. So each disc has uh, about 13 episodes, I think. Yeah, so 13 episodes per disc, which is pretty common for uh, half-hour shows on Blu-ray. That seems to be a good threshold for Blu-ray. Uh, without compromising the quality they look very nice um, in terms of picture and sound quality i mean these are amazing they've never looked or sounded better they're just phenomenal and beautiful uh, and there we go so 52 and and then you'll be able to see here actually how they break them down by season that's something they didn't really make clear in the uh on the dvds but they do make clear here so this is the last batch of episodes from season one so these are the ones this is up to here is where i was recording off tv back in the 90s and you'll hear me talk about that in the retro episodes fair amount a fair amount new retro episodes every thursday by the way um at 6 a.m or noon i can't remember anyway every thursday enjoy so now we have see, uh, season two so this one, they, they divided it up, uh, the episodes on the discs, very much by season. So here we've got, so season two was the, the last 20 episodes of the initial batch of 85 that they made. So here we've got it divided onto two discs. We've got 10 episodes here. And, and then 10 episodes here. Oh, and look, no extras on this disc. This is like the first disc with no extras, I think. Crazy. Oh, and then the, the uh, ever on again, off again romance between Batman and Catwoman there. Very nice. And then finally, season three. This is the one where everybody got kind of a redesign. Um, although you're seeing the older designs here for some reason. Anyway, season three is uh, where I think it was reworked as the Adventures of Batman and Robin. Still all the same creative team and everything, though. You do see some of the Adventures of Batman and Robin title sequences, by the way, on Season 2 episodes, which I thought kind of odd, especially since Robin's not in every episode. But anyway, and there you go. And that's it. That's the last of the episodes there. So this one goes, uh, yeah, it's 12 and 12, so to make up the last batch of episodes there. And then we have a bonus disc. So a bonus disc with uh, special features, which... I think uh, might actually be the special features that were on the old Complete Series set. So at long last, we have them, if you missed it on that old set. And then over here, check it out, we've got Mask of the Phantasm. Yeah, so we got Mask of the Phantasm included. And the Blu-ray of Sub-Zero as well. Now, the Blu-ray of Sub-Zero is kind of cool because uh, versus the DVD because the Blu-ray not only includes the movie, but it actually includes every single animated series episode um, that Mr. Freeze ever appeared in, in chronological order. So you actually get the entire Mr. Freeze saga right here, as, as told by the animated series, on a single disc. So you can watch all the episodes, and then watch the movie, which is the culmination of it, basically, um, all, on the, all on the same disc, so that's great. So we got we get this, uh, Heart of Ice, Deep Freeze, Cold Comfort, and Meltdown. So four episodes. Oh, actually, Meltdown is from uh, Batman Beyond. So I guess watch up to Cold Comfort, then watch Sub-Zero, then watch Meltdown. <laughs> and there you go. And then there you go. Just a little bit of artwork to uh, finish it off. So very nice indeed. And I should mention, for those of you who care about such things, there are digital copies included as well. So let's uh, just put this back together here. Yeah, so when I'm watching the series, I basically just keep the box out and, uh, and watch it from there. Now, there's one other thing I wanted to show you, which is this. So we have this cool-looking envelope. Oh, how mysterious. What could it be? What could it be? Well, let's... Uh, Let's open this up here and find out. Ah, yes, here we go. So these are very cool. Check this out. How well you can see. So we actually have lenticular postcards of artwork from the show. Look at that. Can you see sort of see the 3D-ness there? Look at that. Isn't that cool? 
Very nice. And we've got a bunch of them. There we go. We got the penguin. Try to make sure I'm not blocking anything. Yeah. And then, of course, you got to have the Joker in there somewhere, right? Got to have the Joker. So he's about to dunk Summer Gleason in some gloop there. Batman swooping in to save the day. It's very cool. And then here is carrying Catwoman. He looks serious, but you know he's loving it. <laughs> I love the complexity of their relationship. And then we got a uh, got a lengthwise one here. I'll just pull it back a bit. Another one with the Joker and Harley. Yeah, this is pretty cool. If you're wondering what's on the back of them, there you go. Are they? Is there different pictures? Oh, there's different pictures on the backs of all of them. Okay, hold on. I'll show you. I'll show you all those too. I didn't realize. I thought it was just the same. I didn't even check. <laughs> Batman swooping to the rescue. Very nice. And then there's the back there. Just so much artwork. It's awesome. I love it. And then we have fighting um, fighting poison Ivy. Poison Ivy. Poison poison Ivy. Sorry, I was thinking Harley, and I meant to say Ivy, and I said Ivy. <laughs> Poison Harvey. There we go. Very nice. Really liking. Uh, really liking these artworks. And then coming after Two Face. We can zoom in a little bit more there. I think we did. We look at this one already. I can't remember. There we go. And yeah, we looked at this one. And then there was the Penguin one. And that's the artwork on the back. Joker one. That's the artwork on the back. Catwoman. That's the artwork on the back. <laughs> uh, I think that's it. Yeah, we looked at all of them. Excellent. So all in all, a very, very cool set. If you can uh, get it on sale or something or what have you, do yourself a treat and uh, watch it. And if you've never seen Batman the Animated Series, then what are you waiting for? It's the 80th anniversary of Batman. You should be watching Batman in abundance. But more than anything else, you absolutely owe it to yourself to watch Batman the Animated Series because this is just so good. I mean, this is this is animated television at its finest right here. And as far as adaptations of Batman go, it, it really doesn't get any better than this. I mean, I think this is the best adaptation of Batman ever done. Period. Be it live action or animated, this is it. This is the one I always come back to. Oh, and regarding the digital copy, I was just informed by one of the viewers watching me film this. Apparently, uh, the digital copies are exclusive to Voodoo, and they're not high def. Sorry, no high def digital copies. But, um, yeah, so all the more reason to get the Blu-rays. Whew, okay, that was a lot of stuff to go through there, but uh, hope you enjoyed so, yeah, that is it for this closer look. Uh, Batman the Animated Series, check it out if you haven't already. And if you have, check it out again because it is definitely one that benefits from repeat viewings. And if you'd like to add any of this stuff to your collection, please consider using my Amazon link, which you'll see in the description below. Um, they basically give me a gift card every month for anything that you bought through them, just a little kickback. And it goes right back into the show, basically. I just buy stuff from Amazon with the Amazon gift card and then I can do more videos for you. So there you go. Much appreciated. Thanks. Alrighty. Well, that is it for me to you for now. So big thanks to you for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. 
streams. Be sure to catch me on Twitch. I stream just about every day, and we have a lot of fun over there. Um, yeah, we'll see you next time. Until then, sayonara.